Welcome to Unmasking Horror, a video series where I explore the dark intersection of true crime and the paranormal. I'm your host, Simon Stringer, and today we're diving into one of the most infamous cases in American history, the Amityville Horror, part gruesome crime, part supernatural legend. The story behind 112 Ocean Avenue has both fascinated and terrified people for decades. We'll begin by looking at the real-life horror that took place in the quiet town of Amityville, New York, and then uncover how a paranormal investigation turned it into one of the most enduring ghost stories of all time. But first, let's talk about what happened in 1974, when the haunting truly began, not with spirits, but with murder. The murders at 112 Ocean Avenue. In the early hours of November 13, 1974, 23-year-old Ronald DeFeo Jr. took a rifle and systematically murdered six members of his family as they slept. His parents, Ronald Sr. and Louise, and his four younger siblings, Dawn, Allison, Mark, and John, were all shot and killed in their beds. This was no ordinary family tragedy. The brutality of the crime shocked the small, tight-knit community of Amityville, Ronald Jr. initially claimed that the murders were carried out by a mob hitman, but his story quickly unraveled. He later confessed to the killings, but his reasons were confusing, inconsistent. He claimed he heard voices that drove him to kill, and some have speculated that drugs or a psychotic break could have been involved. In the trial that followed, his defense attorney argued for an insanity plea, citing the voices DeFeo claimed to have heard. However, the jury found him guilty of second-degree murder, and he was sentenced to six consecutive life terms. The gruesome DeFeo murders could have simply been the sad end to a story of family dysfunction, but the events that followed would give rise to something much more sinister and much harder to explain. The Lutz Family and the Paranormal Infamy Just over a year after the DeFeo murders, in December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz moved into the home at 112 Ocean Avenue with their three children. They thought they had found their dream house, especially for the price they paid, $80,000 for a massive Dutch colonial in a charming suburban neighborhood. But what the Lutz family didn't know was that they were stepping into what would become one of the most notorious haunted houses in America. From the first night, strange occurrences began to unfold. George Lutz reported waking up at 3.15 a.m. every night, the exact time the DeFeo murders occurred. The family claimed they heard strange noises, saw eerie apparitions, and witnessed objects moving on their own. The children complained of being tormented by unseen forces, and Kathy Lutz claimed to have levitated above her bed. In one of the most bizarre claims, George said he would see a pair of glowing red eyes staring through the windows at night. The family also reported strange smells, cold spots in rooms, and green slime oozing from the walls. After just 28 days in the home, the Lutz family fled in terror, leaving behind all of their belongings. Their story quickly attracted media attention and it didn't take long for the house to become a paranormal hotspot. But were these events real, or was it all an elaborate hoax? The Paranormal Investigation In February 1976, just a few months after the Lutz family fled, famed paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren were called to investigate the Amityville house. Ed, a demonologist, and Lorraine, a clairvoyant and medium, were no strangers to haunted places, but they said Amityville was unlike anything they had ever encountered. During their investigation, Lorraine reportedly sensed a powerful and malevolent presence in the house. She claimed that the demonic energy in the home was linked to the land itself, suggesting that something evil predated the DeFeo murders. In one of the most famous images from the investigation, a photograph taken by the Warrens' team appeared to show a ghostly child peering from behind a doorway. This Amityville ghost boy became one of the most enduring pieces of evidence for believers. The Warrens concluded that the house was haunted by a demonic force, and they warned future residents to stay away. Despite this, debates over the validity of the Lutz's story raged on, 
with skeptics pointing out that many of the supernatural claims could not be corroborated by evidence. Over the years, George Lutz maintained that the experiences were real, though some neighbors and later residents reported no unusual activity in the house. Fact versus Fiction So, what really happened at 112 Ocean Avenue? It's hard to say for sure. The DeFeo murders are a matter of record. Six lives were tragically taken, and Ronald DeFeo Jr. spent the rest of his life behind bars. But the haunting? That's where the lines between fact and fiction blur. Many have accused the Lutz family of fabricating the paranormal events to profit from the tragedy. The story was eventually turned into The Amityville Horror, both a best-selling book and a blockbuster film, which undoubtedly contributed to the lore surrounding the house. Skeptics argue that the Lutz's experiences could have been exaggerated or entirely invented for financial gain. On the other hand, the sheer number of paranormal claims witnessed by not just the Lutz family but also the Warrens and others makes it difficult to dismiss the story outright. Whether you believe in the supernatural or think the whole thing was a clever hoax, the story of the Amityville horror continues to captivate audiences around the world. The Amityville house still stands, though it's changed owners many times over the years. Its address was even altered to deter curious tourists. But the questions remain. Is the house truly cursed by a dark supernatural force, or was it simply a home marred by the tragedy of the DeFeo family? Thanks for joining us on this journey through the chilling case of Amityville. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, there's no denying that this story leaves a lasting impression. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more true crime stories that touch the supernatural. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe.